In this tutorial, I'll show you how to do some basic editing to the default 2010 WordPress theme. Most of you will recognize this as the 2010 theme, the new default theme in WordPress. Now I'm just going to cover a few simple things here that can really significantly change the look of the default theme. And what I'm going to do is show you how to, how to remove the site title that shows at the top here, how to remove the site description that shows at the top right, reduce this white space and pull your header on up to the top and then change out a custom header and a custom background so we'll go from 2010 theme looking like this to 2010 theme looking like this uh, where you don't have that wasted space at the top with the title and the description uh, so to do that we're going to do it with a child theme now in WordPress if you go to wordpress.org uh, go to the codex and go to child themes uh, there's information here that shows you everything that I'm going to show you in this tutorial and more. Uh, the nice thing about setting up a child theme is that when you customize this 2010 theme and select it, the next time you upgrade WordPress, the 2010 theme will be upgraded as well, uh, but your child theme will not be written over. That was a huge improvement in the latest WordPress is the implementation of these child themes. So instead of talking about it, let me just show you how you do that. I'm using here a copy of WordPress that's on my computer. It's on a, a ZAMP install localhost. Uh, that's the best way in my view to go about editing themes is to edit them locally and then upload them to your hosted site. So I'm going to go first off into my WordPress directory and create the child theme structure. And to do that, I simply go into my WordPress install and this is WordPress. I go into WP Content, Themes, and there's my 2010 default theme. Now I need to create another folder in here for my child theme to live in. So I'm going to create a folder. You can name it anything you want, but it helps if you name it something that's going to relate to the base theme that it's the child theme of. So I'm just naming it 2010 child. If you were making two or three childs off of one theme, you can name 2010 child 1, 2, 3, or anything like that. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and then inside that 2010 child theme folder, the only file you're required to have in there is the base CSS file, the style CSS file. So I'm going to create a blank CSS file. You can use any text editor to do this with, but I'm going to use Notepad++. It's free and it's really good. So I'm going to go here, save as. I'm going to save this as a CSS file. Or you can save it as anything and rename the extension, but it'll allow me just to go ahead and save it as CSS here and then I call it style so there's my child theme now with my 2010 child directory and in that directory is an empty style CSS now the style CSS can't stay empty I need to add some basic lines to it so let's go ahead and do that and what I'm adding here is explained in depth here in the WordPress Codex. If you just go to the WordPress Codex and look for child themes, it explains everything here that I'm doing. Now the only thing that we need in this child theme at the top between the commenting marks is a theme name. I'm just going to call it 2010 child and then we need a template name. And this is the template or the parent theme that this child is based on and mine is based on 2010. There are other optional things you can put there you can read the codex to see what those are. Uh, then the next thing you're going to need is an import rule to import everything from this parent theme 2010. Now that's the required information at the top. What this will do is name your theme, it tells it it's based on 2010, and then it imports the style CSS from that parent 2010 theme. So if you don't add anything else to your child theme except this and upload it and select it, then you'll have the exact same look as the parent 2010 theme. And in fact, we'll do that here just to illustrate. I'm going to save this. If I go to my blog now and go to Site Admin, Appearance, I'll see the child theme. Now again, you can add more stuff and have a thumbnail of it. You can have a author and all kinds of things. but uh, look at the codex to see how to put that in if you want. Now I'm going to activate this child theme. So now the child theme is activated. I go back to my blog. Notice nothing has changed because it's just pulling in everything from the parent 2010 theme. 
But now is where it gets interesting because I can open that style CSS in my child theme and override anything in that parent theme. But first, before we do that, I'd recommend that you always change things that you can change through the admin interface. And one thing that WordPress 3 has given us with this theme here is the ability to go in to the appearance menu on the theme that we have chosen and select a header and a background color. Now I could manually code those in in the CSS, but there's no need to do that since I can just click and do it here. So for my background, I know that I want black as the background color. I could upload an image for the background if I wanted, but we're going to just go ahead and do black as the color. Look at my site. Now I change the background. I'm getting closer to this than I want. Uh, we'll go back and we'll take care of the header as well. Now you can pick any of the standard headers that are already there. Uh, or you can upload a header of your own. You need to create the header and have it 940 by 198 pixels. So I'm going to browse and find that header that I already have created at those dimensions and upload it. There it is. Now I can view the site. Now I'm getting closer. So now on my blog, just by making those two changes in the admin interface, I have my new header and I have the background color set. So if you look at the final product that I want, I want that header image to be at the top and that black line to be gone that the theme puts on it automatically. I need to remove this information. Now a very nice plugin that you need to be using if you're not, if you're using Firefox, is the Firebug plugin. So I could click on Firebug here since I have it installed and go up and inspect these elements in order to help me learn what I need to do. So let's look at this blog title here to start with. If I hover over that and click, I can look over to the right and see in the style CSS the coding for my site title. Now there are lots of ways to get rid of the title. Just as a demo here, I could come in and just say uh, display none. Now some people tell me, I don't know if this is true, but they tell me that doing that is not good for your SEO. Uh, I'm not sure uh, whether that's true or not. I'm not an SEO expert. so. Uh, instead of doing that, there are several ways to handle this. One of the ways that we could handle it is to go in and set a negative margin. So I could go something like margin top and set the top margin. Let's get this display none off so we can see the impact here. And set the top margin at some negative pixel value. So if I were to go negative 10 pixels, for example, you can see how it moved the title up. If you watch, I'll just increase it to 20 and you watch the title. See how it goes up. 30 goes up. 40 up. 50 goes up off the page. So I could just go in and set a negative top margin to something ridiculous like a thousand pixels and it's theoretically still there but it's just never going to be seen. So that's the way that I prefer to do it. Uh, is just by doing it by setting the the high negative uh, top margin. So I can take that negative top margin then, knowing that I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm, we're going to do this in the site title. I'll just copy it from here to keep me from having to re-enter it. And we'll come over here and this is where we'll start. And we'll come over here and this is where we will start our editing. And normally on a child theme, I just go ahead and put a comment here just to help keep me straight. So start editing below because I want to make sure this stuff here uh, stays. And you don't want to have anything above this import rule. Uh, ever, all your editing has to be below this import rule. Uh, so here, then we're going to start our site title editing. And we know that we want to set the margin top to minus 1,000 pixels. And we'll go ahead and close that off and save. Then I should see that my site title is gone. Now I can do the exact same thing now with the site description. So the site description is, if I look at it here, site description. I'm going to take that. I won't do any editing here just to sort of show you what happens if I just go straight to the CSS. And we're going to go now site description, margin top, and we'll do the same thing and close it off and save it. Now I've saved. If I go back and refresh, 
now we see the site description is gone and everything is collapsed up because that's not taking up the space anymore. So now I'm getting closer to what I want here. And I still have that line and I still have a little too much padding at the top here. So we need to take care of those. Go back here. I'm going to look at the, again, inspect the element. Look at my header. And if you notice on the branding image here, there's a top border set. And that's what's causing that black line across the top. If I were to close that off, notice how it just disappears. And so there's a couple ways we can go about removing that. I'm going to take the branding image. But the way that I'll do it here is that I'll just come down and we'll, and I'm going to go border top width, and I'll set the width of the border to zero pixels, and that'll just make it disappear. And there may be other ways to do it, but that's the way I choose to handle it. Now if I come back, now my line is gone. So now we're pretty close to what we have here, except notice when I switch between the two, I still have a little bit of extra white space here that I really don't need. I want to close that up a little bit. So one of the last things I'll do is come here and look at the entire header. And notice on my header I have a padding of 30 pixels. So we'll just reduce that a bit. So we'll take our header and come here and go 10 pixels and we'll go 10 pixels 0 0 and then you'll notice what I'm really doing is just repeating what's here except I'm reducing that 30 down to 10 save come back refresh and now my margin is down if you want it down more just reduce the 10 down to whatever you want if I just come here and take it to 0 it takes it way on up and you can take it to 5 pixels whatever you sort of like there and so with just a little bit of editing, uh, now I've really dramatically changed the look of that default theme. Now if you look, I have two identical looking themes here uh, with just a few edits to the child CSS. Now if we go back into Appearance, if I select again the default 2010 theme, then my default is there. When I go back and select my child, now all my changes are there. So in the future when I upgrade WordPress and the 2010 theme gets overwritten and upgraded it's not going to overwrite my child theme and all my customizations will still be intact.